Good afternoon. Yeah, it is 2.30. We are starting the afternoon session. Uh, we would uh, like to invite uh, Dr. Jagdish Arora, director in Flipnet, who coordinates the uh, library journal acquisition and uh, dissemination work. And uh, uh, as before, we will not introduce uh, anybody else. Uh, we'll not give much introduction. Yeah. So, Dr. Yeah. Good afternoon to you. So I'm from an organization called Information and Library Network. What we basically do is provide access to e-resources to universities and colleges, and my presentation is on that. Next, please. Well, uh, uh, when we started giving e-resources to the university, we realized that universities do not have internet connection. So the first program was to provide them connectivity. Of course, this has now been winded up because all universities are part of NK, and they're getting NK connectivity. The money that we had for providing internet connectivity is now being used for you know, providing better uh, internet facilities or rather better LAN facilities within the campus. Next please. As far as access to e-resources is concerned, we have two programs. One is UGC to InfoNet Digital Library Consortium and another is NGIST. UGC InfoNet Digital Library Consortium is for universities where we provide about 7,000 electronic journals and about 11 bibliographic databases to universities. There are about 204, 208 universities that are eligible. They are basically 12 universities funded by UGC and government. So they are eligible and they get access to resources. Enlist was a project funded by NMEICT where we provided access to 5,000 electronic journals and 97,000 e-books to colleges. Uh, till last, there are about 3,200 colleges that had registered. Uh, the program, the formal funding from uh, NME ICT has stopped, but we have made plans how to you know, carry it forward. Next, please. Uh, as far as UGC Infonet is concerned, uh, we have, uh, like I mentioned, uh, uh, the UGC provides funds for giving access to e-resources to about 200 universities. But we also have uh, what we call associate membership program, where these resources can be subscribed by private universities and other institutions. Other institutions may also include IITs and NITs who wanted to subscribe some of the resources that we give to you. So we have associate membership program. About 210 associate members are getting benefit from this. Next, please. These associate members pay their own subscription. The rates that we have negotiated is applicable, but they pay their own subscription. So UGC Infonet has about 8,000 journals, 29 publishers. And it is across almost all big publishers that one can think of, commercial, academic, uh, societies, university presses, and bibliographic databases like SciFinder Scholar, MathSciNet, and Web of Science. Next, please. We maintain a website, comprehensive website, with tutorials on every aspect. In fact, inspired from uh, Professor Kannan, we also have a spoken tutorial on usage of e-resources. Next, please. Usage, data harvesting and data analysis. In the morning also, next please. It was being mentioned as to what are the usage, who are using it, and what are the impact. So we have done those studies where uh, we have a, uh, a interface where the, uh, the where the usage is automatically downloaded from the publisher's website. There is a standard called counter. All publisher maintain their statistics using counter standard, and this is what we call Sushi client. It's another protocol which automatically harvest data and present it. Next, please. Once you are logged in, as a university, you would be able to see how you have used your resource. Next. How, and this kind of plots come automatically. So any university can look at the resources they have used and how they have used various resources. Next, please. Like this is uh, for, for a university, e journals, how they have used various resources. Next. One can see the usage journal-wise also. How, like in fact, ACS, they have 40 journals. How these 40 journals are used across this period is also visible. Next, another statistic. We've also worked out, every time you go to a funding agency, they ask how we've been used, this, how, what is the cost recovery factor, what is the download rate. So these things we maintain. Thanks to the infrastructure, state, this is done automatically. Cost incurred, cost recovered is basically what we try to do is that every article that you download costs some money. 
on average about 15 dollar is cost. So, if you multiply total number of downloads by 15 dollars and compare it how what money you have spent, uh, we have seen that we have recovered cost almost in all cases. Next. We have also seen that uh, the productivity of universities in terms of number of articles authored by universities have increased drastically. You see, the 2005, the consortium started in 2004. So, from 2005 onwards, this is increase that increase is about 76 percent. And another interesting uh, aspect is that there is a very strong and positive correlation between number of articles a university downloads and number of articles that they produce. So, more the number of downloads, more is the number of articles that is produced. And the correlation coefficient is 0 0.65. Next please. The Enlist program uh, funded by NME ICT. Next. Next. So, again we give a subset of what we give it to universities is given to uh, the Enlist. So, it is basically a subset, all scholarly journals. Beside, we also gave books to them. Books are purchased on one time purchase basis. So, that means that even if the program stops now, we will have books to offer to the uh, users because they are purchased on one time payment basis. Next please. Uh, this is a usage cost recovery and all those factors we have worked like we did for UGC Infinite. Next please. The average cost in case of journal is as low as 5.97 rupees. And in case books, it is 1.24 rupees per book per college. Next. Uh, the enlist was given three awards, uh, two, 2010 E-India, Manthan and Stock Digital Inclusion Award. We have also done as to how these universities have performed. So, various statistical analysis has been done. Next please. Like you can say publication output, how they have uh, their publication output in diff, uh, about nine field of area is given then how are their compound annual growth and next and how do they compare with the world data. This data has been done for every 50 university or rather all of the 50 universities. Next, next. Then how is the relative specialization index in various fields, about 9 fields we have taken. Next, how they have collaborated with various universities, this data is available for all the 50 universities and what is their impact in terms of H factor and in terms of the citations that their publications have received. Next, uh, if you look, if you rank the university about the H factor, you can see how they rank uh, H factor wise. So, this uh, study was done for 50 universities. Next, and how they have done in different fields, like in chemical sciences, University of Hyderabad is on top, then physical sciences, Punjab University is on top. So, we have done this study for about 50 universities that are getting access to all e-resources under UGC. So, for dif different fields we have done that. Next, yeah. so, nine fields we have done this study. Next, please. now what has happened is that uh, over the year that allocation given to the consortium is coming down. Like for example, Indest is a consortium where they provide uh, some funds in non under non-plan. In fact, MHRD has three consortium. One is UGC Infonet that we are running from Infinet for universities. Another is Enlist, which is for colleges, and yet another is Indest, which is for technical institutions. So money has been coming down, and then a number of institutions are increasing. Looking at that, uh, HRD had appointed a committee, and uh, after a lot of reiterations, we decided that there should be a separate fund for. Uh, this consortium initiative it is called Cheers Consortium for Higher Education Electronic Resources. The money has now been allocated, so there would not be any problem for in years to come, especially to uh, in technical institution where the number of technical institutions have increased and uh, the money was static. So, now according to the demand, this would look after all the consortium, all the three consortium would be having one single negotiation that would mean that rates would also come down drastically. Next, we also have set an open access initiative uh, in Infibnet, while uh, the UGC Infonet and Enlist, there is a cost involved. In open access, whatever content we have is open to everybody, one can look at them and use them. So, Shodhganga is one of the content, next please. Next, in Shodhganga we host electronic thesis, the full text of the electronic thesis 
into the repository called Chodganga. Right now, it has almost 14,000 theses are there. We will be reaching 15,000 very shortly. And uh, this again was given India award. Number of university who have signed MOU is about 157. So, that is increasing. In fact, there is a mandate of UGC that every university must sign and deposit their thesis into Shodhganga repository. So, this is accessible to everybody openly. We also give three benefits to university who sign with us. One benefit is they get access to anti plagiarism package. The second is they get a, uh, uh, they get funds for setting up an ETD lab, where the ETD labs are set up and they can, uh, the students are encouraged to create multimedia and put up with their uh, thesis. And uh, yet another uh, benefit is in terms of uh, uh, money for digitizing back volumes of thesis. So, every university will sign are getting funds for digitizing five years of their back volume. Shodhganga 3 is a companion to Shodhganga, where uh, approved theses are being submitted to Shodhganga. Next please. We also offer a platform, where uh, faculty from uh, universities can uh, you know, put their open access journals. So, right now, they have 14 journals are available. They are all available in open access. Next. Uh, Infoport is another initiative, while there are several initiatives where they catalog uh, free internet resources. We restrict it only to Indian uh, thesis or rather uh, e-resources that are originated in India. They are all available through this portal. Uh, we are working on access management system. You know, most of the e-resources in universities and, and uh, institutions are IP access based. So, if you are in the university campus, you can access them. If we are not, you won't be able to do it. So, we are working on this open source initiative that would allow off campus access to people. So, this, we have started in a minor way. In Enlist, in fact, in Enlist, uh, there are more than 5 lakhs users that are already. Uh, so, they have their individual login and password. Using this technology, we are enabling it. Next. We also have a union catalog, which is a catalog of about 150 universities having more than 1 crore 25 lakhs records. Again, these are freely available and libraries can download the records. They buy a book, new book, and it is available here. They can download the records and put it in their local lo library management system. Next. So, this is, uh, we have signed up uh, with, uh, yeah, uh, with uh, Google, and uh, these books would shortly be available through Google also. Next. Next. Uh, this is sole software. I won't touch upon it. So, just a library management software. And we provide uh, training programs on various aspects of information technology and analysis of information. Next. Uh, we have also done some projects for UGC. UGC's website is maintained by us. Next. And they have these programs. They have basically the scholarships and uh, fellowships. They are all monitored by us. Uh, our computer interfaces for them. The application comes processed at Implibnet in Ahmedabad. So, that is it. EPG Patshala is another uh, project that we have, where we are creating content for about 77 subjects. 50 contains creation in 50 subjects have already started. More than 500 modules are ready now. That is it. That is it. Thank you. That is it. Thanks for patience. Uh, before I request Professor Kannan to start describing the projects that are happening here, I have pleasure in inviting Dr. Anandan uh, to share in just five minutes, very briefly, the uh, massive activities that uh, Microsoft uh, Research has been doing here. Uh, I thought it would add value to understand a very fairly giant step by Microsoft. Thank you, Professor Fatak. Um, this is about a project, I think it was mentioned in a couple of times earlier, called Massively Empowered Classrooms. It's an experiment that we have been doing on the use of uh, you know, these kind of technologies in a blended uh, model. Uh, but my colleague Siddharth actually has been uh, doing all the work, and so he'll give you a little insight into the project. You have five minutes. Yes. <laughs> sure. Uh, thanks, Anandan. So, uh, we work at Microsoft Research, and uh, uh, interestingly, all the problems we've been discussing since morning is something a lot of scientists and researchers in the lab have also been thinking about for the last two years. So, <coughs> we figured out that, you know, all the problems that were highlighted in the morning, 
what can technology do in bits and pieces to actually go ahead and address at least whatever is possible as of today. So this is an experiment we've been doing. We started uh, the first pilot in uh, January last year. And uh, since there onwards, we have actually taken a lot of feedback and come back and uh, made some changes here and there, added some new features to actually go and address small, small things. So essentially, MEC uh, stands for Massively Empowered Classroom. That's uh, the project's name. It's basically a blended model that tries to give a role to the local faculty, have something that interests students as well as something for the college management at all levels. So I'll not spend a lot of time on all of these slides because we also have a demo. So I'll just give you a quick overview so that you can come to the stall and see the real demo. So in a nutshell, just uh, MEC uh, provides content that is developed uh, in alignment to whatever we discuss in the morning, short videos of you know nine minutes to 15 minutes to 20 minutes, videos which are very slow paced, videos which are focused at addressing uh, the local curriculum that universities follow. And all of this content is actually available for local faculty also to use. So if, for example, uh, you are from an affiliating university institute, what you will get is some content that is developed by professors from IITs and various other uh, community efforts that we've done. And uh, as local professors, you would be able to actually go create your own content and add your own content on top of that. What students will be able to do is leverage the content that comes from uh, the community as well as go ahead and leverage the content that you roll on. Uh, some features at a glance. Uh, as I said, uh, the content that's available on MEC is designed in such a way that it aligns to the curriculum that you prescribe for uh, you know, colleges in uh, your affiliating university. So as of now, we've actually partnered with some universities, which I'll uh, come to later. So what we have done is created university universes on the website. And each college which is part of that universe, that university is listed there. So if you are a student, the student goes to the website, selects his college, enrolls for the course. Uh, the current course that we have is on design and analysis of algorithms. Right now we just have one course. But uh, the student goes and selects that course. He gets all the content, as I said. And a lot of local teachers from those institutes which are affiliating to that university have been adding content that <coughs> their students have been using. So far, as I said, uh, we started this last January, and the site that we have today is completely different from what we had a uh, year and a half ago, primarily based on the feedback that we got from different colleges. Uh, the first pilot we did was with the VTU in Bangalore, Vishwasarya Technological University. And it was a relatively small scale pilot because we were also learning when we came out with the project and we created some content, gave it out. But uh, we had some very interesting findings. So if, uh, you know, just uh, going back to the presentations we saw in the morning, uh, we saw, we, we heard a lot about MOOCs and enrollment numbers and engagement numbers. But what we essentially observed through MEC is something very interesting. More than 17% students who participated in the pilot actually sustained the entire six month engagement. Now, essentially this means that if content is appealing to students, if if uh, it's aligned to their curriculum and if the quizzes are actually in sync with the exams that they take in class, the retention and their level of interest is way higher as compared to probably a course, which is not really, really aligned to what they do. So based on those learnings, we extended our pilot. We went to other universities. We pilot, uh, We actually partnered with GTU. In fact, Professor Akshay is sitting right here. We met him. And through his support, his office support, we rolled it out for uh, students in Gujarat. We saw very active participation there as well. And then uh, we also put this as part of the QEEE program that many of your colleges are actually part of. So this MOOC is also offered there. The other very interesting learning we had through uh, you know, this, this uh, MEC, as we call it, was around incentives. So we also figured out with time that not only quality content is what students want, they also want an incentive mechanism, which is rewarding in the sense that they get some certificates out of what they do, as well as some way of gratification in terms of maybe getting an internship opportunity at some organization or getting a project that they can work on uh, in sync with industry and so on and so forth. So based on all of those things, as I said, we've made a lot of changes. And this is a research experiment where uh, we have tried to blend and merge all of these learnings. And so far, uh, with each pilot that we do, the enrollment numbers are going higher and higher. So. Strategically, we have been actually reaching out to universities because we thought, uh, as I said, the USP is course and content alignment. So we've been reaching out to universities. 
and uh, in this room also uh, there are a lot of uh, vice chancellors and other decision makers so i would encourage all of you to actually come see the demo at the booth and uh, there i can actually show what all you can do as teachers and as as an administrator local faculty as i said can do a lot of things that that i cannot really, really talk about so when you come to the booth i'll uh, talk about those things show you a quick demo and we would love to partner and extend this course to your universities as well so i finish in time <laughs> Except that I would like to suggest that the scale of 3,000, 5,000 is not adequate. The first year students every year are 1.25 million in engineering. Our pilot we are planning from July. We don't want to go beyond 1 lakh students. But less than 1 lakh students is not an acceptable scale in this country. So that, is a, that is a major problem. And yet we have to maintain quality at that level. But these uh, things are very wonderful. If you have some more details or papers, if you could send them, we will ensure that it is put up on the website of the conference. Incidentally, the co conference website will remain alive for quite some time and will also put any interaction mechanism and uh, for you to comment and so on. Okay, so now uh, the last uh, part of this particular phase of the conference is a brief description of the uh, exciting national mission projects which are being conducted under uh, uh, the coordinatorship of Professor uh, Kannan here. So let me invite Kannan to... Oh, Kannan is already here, sorry. Okay, in this uh, session, I think there are about five people. Uh, and we are giving six plus one minute, okay, for everybody. I'll begin. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, a project, Talk to a Teacher and Spoken Tutorials. Uh, talk to a teacher, I'll briefly mention this was done when I was the head of CD at IIT Bombay. We transmitted 5,000 hours of classroom lectures. In 100 kbps in 2006, we came up with uh, transmission methodologies for that. Uh, some people said that they preferred live transmission because it conveyed pedagogy. Namely, the class started on time and every lecture got delivered, all kinds of things. Uh, ask a question is another thing that we are running. Uh, electrical engineering department faculty members have been answering questions live one hour a week, 150 weeks are over. Okay, it's been doing and I believe it has a great potential. It can go and uh, be useful for several offline kind of uh, educational methods. It gives the confidence that when somebody answers, you know that an IIT professor is answering. So it is possible to scale up, it is possible for experts to come from different parts of the world and the students also to come from different parts of the world and participate. It is also possible to offer flipped classroom through that mode. Now I will talk about the next topic, spoken tutorials. Uh, we created this for IT literacy. It is a screen or screencast material of 10 minutes, 10 minute duration created for self learning. Uh, you know, I can spend uh, 10 minutes to explain why it is suitable, but I will skip this. Uh, we restrict ourselves to open source software so that the students can actually download the software and try them out side by side. In fact, that method we call a side by side method. We believe that it promotes active learning. We arrange these tutorials in a sequence. I am going to show you this. I have it here. This is our uh, website. And I have got a uh, few. Uh, Web page is already downloaded. Let me just check. Um, so what happens is when I click this, this video search, it takes me to some site like this. And then I can, you can see that C programs are all listed in a required order. I can actually click this and then uh, play this. So it's just a simple uh, screencast, no issue. I think uh, it's fairly audible there. And uh, here is, uh, you can see here, you can actually pick and choose your FOSS category. You can also select a language. We dub the spoken part into Indian languages. Uh, so you can actually click this. And so what I have done is in the next page, I have selected a PHP. 
Happy Academy में आपका स्वागत है। Okay, and then below each of these we even have the script and so on. So if I click this, I have already downloaded the Hindi script. You can see. Uh, we actually create the script first and then uh, record it. We it gives several advantages. For example, I can uh, activate this Hindi. Okay, I don't know whether we have internet properly. Basically, I can uh, uh, enable that. Maybe it comes. I don't know. Ah, it is coming. Okay. It allows us to search. It allows to allows us to do a lot of things. Um, so, in our language, I believe that this is useful for employment. You would have noticed that the video is in English, the spoken part is in uh, in mother tongue. It is helpful for a lot of our children who want jobs in multinational companies, but they are they have difficulty in following um, English. Uh, we also give honorarium to create. So, one of the decisions we made in the beginning was to use open source recording software. Software. However, primitive it might be. So, we said we would not go for high tech recording software. This is one of the most important requirements in our project. So, in the next slide, I will talk about how to use this. Uh, because this is created for self learning, we can organize workshops without domain experts. We said our tutorials are of 10 minute duration. We will conduct workshops only for 2 hours. It provides lots of benefits and um, you know, somebody has to monitor how much time I have taken. Uh, uh, it, uh, as I mentioned active learning, uh, we do not need domain experts. We are training large numbers of students and in fact, I will show you our web page. Press the wrong button. So, there are some uh, maps here. So, if you click this, will take you here. Okay, by the way, this is something I wanted to play. Mozilla Firefox interface toolbar spoken tutorial So that was Sanskrit. Okay. So we actually give uh, statistics of people who, for example, we are in Maharashtra. If I click this, it tells you how many workshops, how many participants, and um, it actually tells you uh, what is happening 25th lots of workshops happened and uh, so if you see here you also see lots of workshops that are happening in the near future. Uh, we have a, a large web usage as well uh, with about 10 minutes of average retention time. So, given that our spoken tutorials are only about 10 minutes duration, this is considered uh, pretty good. And uh, I have a feedback of 25,000 participants. Many participants give information, quickly go through this uh, quality of instructional material, quality of infrastructure. In the colleges, you can see that quite a few students say it is fair. The middle one also is, uh, has been selected by many people. Quality of organizer in the college, remember we do not have domain expert, is being organized by various places, uh, various uh, people. Uh, we also connect if required and connect through Skype and say hello, how are you and so on. So, it is good or very good. Overall quality of the self workshop is considered good or very good. And extent of applicability of what is learned in self workshops, you can see somewhat quite a few people say it. So, as a result, I believe that quite a few people join just to get a certificate, whether it is useful for them or not. And will they recommend this to other people? Again, once again, they will likely, quite likely, definitely. Uh, we expect to do 10,000 workshops in this year, 10,000 workshops, because we are doing about 30 to 40 workshops every day. Okay? It is happening in parallel simultaneously, and we have uh, material to, uh, to conduct uh, workshops on 20 different topics. These are all IT literacy topics. And uh, adaptation in academia, HP University in choice based credit system has used it. Anna University for its faculty development has adopted this. Now, it has been made mandatory in the labs of 450 plus polytechnic colleges in Tamil Nadu by Director Technical Education. This number is growing. In fact, I look forward to uh, 
some more people here to adopt this and we are ready to work with everyone. Come to the end of my talk, the funding we are grateful for NME, grateful to NME ICT. Um, so, uh, I have mentioned Akash, it turns out that we also developed uh, an accounting software called uh, ABT, Akash Business Tool for Akash. We already have five tutorials, uh, basically you screen, uh, capture the screen from a laptop. Um, anyway, spoken tutorial is an effective instructional methodology, it can be used to spread open source software, it can be used to provide IT literacy and to bridge the digital divide. I did not really talk about digital divide, it turns out that many of the things that for example, we have things on uh, Firefox, how to write an email and so on, but we can also write things about create tutorials on um, you know uh, how to stand in a queue or uh, you know how does one look for a job or you know things like that. Many skill based things can easily be made available and we have set up a huge pipeline, you put there it will spread all over. Uh, it also turns out that many of the health related things can be made available why you should boil water and so on. And uh, one doctor told me that during childbirth, uh, women spend at least uh, two, three months at home and they do not do physical work. They have, they can sit and listen to a lot of things. So, make this available, flood the whole country. You can actually make this a developed country. That is the reason why I say that it has a potential to make us a developed country. It can be used to promote Akash as well. And in fact, I would like to say spoken tutorials on Akash are weapons of mass instruction. We can carpet bomb the whole country with these tools and educate everyone. So, with that I would like to thank you. We have uh, Professor uh, Jayendran Venkateswaran. So, he is going to talk about uh, FOSI, free and open source software in education. Uh, there are seven people who are uh, partnering this project. In fact, I am uh, one of the uh, uh, co-investigators in this project. Delighted to have Jayendran. Jayendran is a faculty member in IEOR, um, Industrial Engineering and Operations Research. Yeah, go ahead. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Kannan. Uh, and good afternoon to all. So, this is another uh, FOSI project, uh, which is also under NMEICT project. Uh, uh, myself, Jayendran, and uh, the other PIs uh, this project are Professor Ashwas Mahajan, Sir Shiva Gopal Krishnan, Sir Pratik Chakravarti. Prabhu Ramchandra, Madhu Belu, Manibhushan and Professor Kannan. Uh, we are all based at IIT Bombay. Uh, so, what is this about FOSI? Uh, so, we have been talking about massive online courses and instruction and freeware. So, one of the other major component is free and open source software that is available. Uh, the idea being to eliminate the use of proprietary software uh, systems in education across India. The cost education institutions, given our budget is limited and number of colleges as we have been seeing in the morning has been, is there is a lot of colleges where the cost of all these softwares does amount to very, very significant amount. So, we want to, if not eliminate at least reduce uh, the use of proprietary commercial softwares by um, bringing out helpful materials on how to use these free and open source software and what, what softwares can be replaced with these kind of open source software. So, hope that we we hope to help education institutions save on expense, definitely. Um, modify software to suit different research and academic needs, train students to prepare for uh, future careers, and also help uh, curb software piracy. Most of the time, we find that students cannot distinguish between uh, illegally downloaded uh, Windows software versus uh, legally available free and open source software. From the student point of view, it seems like both are the same available for free, but we want to even educate them that you have the right to actually download and play with open source software, uh, not true with uh, say Word and PowerPoint. So, what do we do? So, one way to reach, so how do we develop the reach to the whole country about using free and open source software? So, the ways that we have taken up are some of these, many more ideas from your side is also welcome and we are also working on some of it. First is textbook companion, why not create? codes using the free and open source software for solved examples from standard textbooks. We have a list of all the textbooks prescribed to AICT along with all the colleges. The solved examples are available, we can write a code to, for example, we have a code on say uh, how to do matrix multiplication. We can show how to use Scilab to do the matrix multiplication. Uh, lab migration another activity we are taking up, migrate labs uh, using from commercial softwares to 
only FOSS only lab, uh, support for self workshops as part of the FOSI initiative we are also developing um, domain specific uh, spoken tutorials, Professor Kanan just uh, talked about that which can also use be used to uh, conduct the self workshops, uh, support for spoken tutorial forums uh, and conferences. So, enough of uh, yeah, currently these are some of the FOSS tools that we are working on. Uh, Scilab which is FOSS alternative to MATLAB for numerical computation, Python it is also a very powerful uh, high level object oriented programming language. Um, so, uh, you know, instead of C, Java, things like that. And OSCAD, this is uh, FOSS alternative to ORCAD, this has been completely developed in house at IIT Bombay, uh, which can be used for circuit design and PCB design. Open form, this is another free and open source alternative to fluent and computational fluid dynamic software. Typically computational fluid dynamic software are you know very computationally I mean, intensive as well as uh, very expensive ones and this open form is a very good alternative for those kind of systems. In fact, many of the companies themselves are adopting this open form, consulting companies as well as big companies are adopting open form. So, when students are exposed to these softwares since they are free you now various colleges I am directly addressing to all the vice chancellors here. If this can be directly used in your own colleges, then it also increases the employability of the students since they are now exposed to various softwares which will which can be directly you know uh, increasing their employment opportunities. And one other topic is this coin or which is open source software for operation research, optimization, simulation related applications uh, is this coin or. Uh, we also have a uh, stall put up, so details of various of these initiatives are available there. Uh, a lot of achievements that we have listed till now is we, we used to conduct uh, these live workshop and self workshops. Uh, the key thing about the textbook companions, I think 344 textbooks uh, companions have been created and many more. I think similar equivalent, equivalent number are in pipeline. Uh, spoken tutorials we have contributed, course conversion. Lab migration is a little slow because we are getting in touch with various specific colleges, finding out what kind of computational labs they have and try to help migrate those kind of labs with. Uh, using these FOSS tools mainly Scilab and Python. Uh, maybe I will just quickly show, do I have anything else here? Yeah, sorry. Um, path ahead is to promote additional FOSS tools like Open Formal R, Open Modelica, uh, additional text to companions. Okay. Uh, one thing I just want to mention is we want more partner in institutions to be part of this FOSC initiative and help contribute and develop this aspect. So, any, any colleges, anyone who is interested please contact us either um, you know during the conference or uh, soon afterwards, we want to you know, work with you to develop it. I am also a little greedy with uh, this. So, just to this, is, FOSI, uh, oh, this is okay, this is specific for Scilab, I do open FOSI website. So, I will just stick with this, I do not want to change the site. So, the textbook companions are available, you know you can um, take up any book all the codes are available online uh, which is also available. Each of these uh, I'm not sure, uh, is it on I do not know. Each of these codes one thing is we already integrated with the Garuda cloud Scilab. So, you can actually select say uh, any category I am just randomly picking a book I have no idea what kind of examples that we are having in this. I can actually pick up a particular example, the code is available which is now accessing the Garuda server and anybody can actually execute the code and the output will be displayed. So, in this way you do not even need to install the software and student has the flexibility to you know play around with these numbers and enhance their learning. You can also modify. You can modify the code. In, um, I did not pick a good example, you can actually even plots will also be coming here. So, even coming. That is also available. So okay, thank you, here. Jayendran. Thank you. Thank you. So while uh, connecting, I can just say add to what uh, Jayendran said. These kind of things are uh, textbook companion, support to self workshops, lab migration are expected to be replicated to every open source software that we adopt. So he talked about he showed Scilab. Similar thing for OSCAD. Similar thing for uh, Open Form similar thing for coin war and so on. This is one easy way to provide 
documentation and interestingly all of these are done by 95% of the work is done by students from across the country very little is done by iit students okay so we have professor kavi arya who will talk about e yantra thank yes. you 6 minutes right plus 1 as you said okay my name is kavi arya um, i teach a subject here called embedded systems which is computers where you don't see them they are buried inside machines now in a very rapidly growing in fact I I exponentially growing a uh, economy like that of india there's a huge need for machines as soon as you talk about things like manufacturing industry any industry retail industry and so on and agriculture especially there's a huge need for machines cheap machines right which can do all the work that we want but the the students that we get out of our colleges don't are not used to using their hands right there's a lot of rote learning so we wondered how to teach embedded systems in a more project based way where people actually can take a real problem and solve it and through the distance education program here when we tried to teach this uh, uh, topic we found it very difficult so we found that we came up with a very nice answer when we designed a little robot which students could then program right and uh, they could write code for solve little problems uh, with and stuff like this so along with that we came up with a very novel way of project based learning where we tried to develop not a robot but an entire ecosystem based around this robot with which students can see a real problem in the outside world and solve it using the robot in the small right so that's what e yantra is all about and uh, ever since we got the backing of mhrd we've taken this we've taken this knowledge this gyan that we've acquired all across the country and we are in the process of establishing 500 robotic labs in colleges throughout the country in the next 3 years okay so this is what it's all about teaching embedded systems through distance education program was difficult how does one teach systems engineering which has become more and more important as time goes on computer systems are not living in isolation anymore they are actually connected to other systems so it's a much more complex problem where design skills engineering skills software skills are all equally important so how do you actually teach these kind of things right so the core of our of our entire uh, uh, yeah one more thing is typically we teach students convergent thinking take a problem analyze the hell out of it and come to an answer but actually most problem solving is about take a problem think of 10 different ways to solve it first and then think of different ways to analyze and study what needs to be solved that's divergent design thinking right and the core of our approach is that we target the project component in a student's curriculum we teach project based learning and we target at the moment be projects we are trying to put this into the curriculum but be projects kids don't realize that that be project that they do the final year project is actually their janam kundli as an engineer that shows what a guy is capable of and typically they buy these projects or they do some feeble kind of library kind of software or whatever it is they don't really exercise their minds and the first thing i ask any interview who who comes to iit either for an mtech program or project assistant or whatever it is tell me about your be project right and that's when we sort of study how well they vibe with the technology so how can we do this in a scalable manner so we have to build an ecosystem when they built an lca they didn't have to build an aircraft they had to build an aircraft industry so we realized that we're trying to push this robot out we are not pushing a robot out into colleges we have to build an entire ecosystem so that is the story of e yantra right now so there's this thing called the washington accord and i was educated about this by uh, uh, professor ray this is his slide i think where it talks about these are skills that engineering students should have many important skills like design investigation modern tool usage and so on e yantra can really help each of these elements being taught in colleges okay so this is the ballpoint pen that we have developed with which students can write interesting robotic stories this pen is trying to become a a commodity item we are trying to bring down the cost of this pen and we are trying to e improve the kind of stories that students can write by borrowing other stories which have been written and building more interesting stories around them often we i used to go to colleges students want to do a robotic project you don't get a robot in the market if it's there is lego mindstorm this too expensive you lose a small component you render the whole thing useless not good right so at the moment they can buy this off the shelf and just use it right if it get spoiled or some part breaks they can just have it fixed okay and more important than this is the ecosystem of previously written software and modules 
if he wants to do a complex task and he has the problem of say localization how do i find out where my robot is in this space rather than build the wheel from scratch he can download it off our website that some other student has built a nice localization component or an image processing component so they can build more and more complex projects around this and this is how engineers typically work in the environment outside these are expensive robots that we saw a number of years ago very very expensive and these were the the family of robots that came out in our lab right so the eantra ecosystem is this we are trying to engage with teachers students and colleges first of all we thought that oh this is very wholesome this is like milk people will grab it but no people don't take it even if it's good you have to engage with them in various ways so i have become an event manager we become uh, competition managers we become all sorts of uh, uh, things here in order to move this stuff so we engage with uh, students teachers and colleges students through a national robotic competition that we organize where we take problems from the real world turn them into games and make the students solve these games which we call themes right and then we seed seed labs uh, uh, through this then we have a lab set up initiative where we tell each college if you are willing to invest 5 lakhs in buying the equipment and you'll give us four of your teachers to train we'll give them all our gyan we'll take them through the process and you'll have a robotic lab how much time do i have one minute then okay so we work with both colleges and 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 the students also a three pronged approach this is our coverage all over india right it shows you uh, we got extremely good representation and in summary right we have a three pronged approach with students teachers and colleges we have scalability through nodal centers and we have a symposium here every year where teachers come and exchange their best practices and our job is to sustain the whole thing now if i have your permission i have a half minute video may i show it because that illustrates what this is all about very well okay this is what students are capable of after a two day workshop training on the robot and then they build their own thing so uh, this was uh, some a uh, course project which was done in about 5 weeks which is very typical of what students do right and and we had an agricultural theme on the course and they wanted to build a so agriculture domain fruit a sorting of robot sorting of different type of fruit based on its size and color and different other attributes our system consists of three main modules fruit dispensing module image processing module and uh, fruit routing module everything has been designed and built by the students and the robot is down here right they use the robot to control uh, sensors manage servo motors dc motors to solve a problem so this is a hopper which feeds lemons into this uh, thing here which releases the lemons one at a time then it does image processing here identifies what the color of the lemon is if it's green it puts it into one bin right if it's yellow it puts it into another bin right this is a very simple kind of uh, problem which has been solved okay once the dispensing module gives one fruit to the ip module ip module so that's it thank you uh, good afternoon thank you professor kannan uh, what i'm going to be talking about is uh, not directly an nme ict project but you can consider uh, some of these as either the foundation behind some of the nme ict projects at iit bombay and also as uh, something that's built upon the projects so we are an inter, uh, we are an academic program and uh, like a department within iit bombay it's of small size so in iit we call them interdisciplinary programs and uh, it's uh, next slide please we started in 2010 and we offer a phd program currently we have 20 a little more than 20 phd research scholars within the program uh, we have faculty members uh, core faculty members within the department as, as well as associate faculty members from other departments in the institute and visiting and adjunct faculty members both from india and abroad uh, our phd students undergo coursework they do research projects they do some outreach activities so it's exactly like any other program within the institute next slide please um to tell you a little bit about what research we are doing uh, i thought that i'll just list the titles of some of our phd students theses and i've grouped them in a rough manner uh, many of them in fact are uh, about how to design 
some of the activities that are happening in the National Mission Project. So for example, at the right at the top, we have uh, research scholars working on uh, design guidelines for virtual labs, uh, teaching programming using uh, spoken tutorials, interactive visualizations for learning engineering content and skills and so on. Uh, a number of our students, this is the second group there, are also working on using several educational technology tools and strategies to learn either engineering and science content or uh, skills such as problem solving skills, engineering design skills, um, problem posing skills and so on. The third group there talks about the actual usage of products that come out of these projects. So let's say we develop interactive visualizations. And they're really good quality visualizations that have been developed. But uh, you, uh, a normal teacher may not know what to do with it, how to use it, how to effectively integrate it in their teaching uh, practice. So we have some students working on teacher integration of these resources, and they're doing a lot of workshops and coming up with strategies on uh, teacher integration of these resources. And we do have some students working on the technology in the tools angle, uh, working on automating either content creation, such as the textbook, uh, project or uh, designing evaluation instruments. Okay, and as a department, we also are, have been doing a lot of outreach activities. The first one, in fact, is a part of the Teach 10,000 Teachers project, which uh, many of you are familiar with. And we conducted a workshop for engineering college instructors, uh, helping them do action research on their own teaching practice. So we did a workshop on research methods in education. And then the people who submitted the assignments as uh, they were supposed to, uh, we selected the top 50 and mentored them through a long six month process. The mentoring was in fact done by our PhD research scholars. And uh, 12 of them in fact submitted and uh, their paper got accepted in the IEEE International Conference T4E last year. We've also been doing a lot of workshops, both face-to-face -face and via T10, KT and other uh, online modes on uh, effective teaching learning strategies and uh, integrating educational, uh, integrating ET in engineering education. A lot of these materials are uploaded uh, in Creative Commons license and here are a couple of websites where we have them. So this is all the slides I had, but uh, since there are a lot of uh, vice chancellors of colleges and uh, senior AICT members, I have one request to all of you, and I think Professor Fatak might reiterate it later. Uh, we have a regular PhD program. It's recognized. It's, it's a regular IIT Bombay PhD. And what I would like to request you is to recognize these as regular PhDs, as uh, um, you know, as valid PhDs in your department, because that's a problem many of our uh, students are facing. They have MTechs or MSCs from uh, universities, and they're doing a PhD in ET where they're learning education, technology development, and domain, because they're using education, pedagogy, and technology for better understanding of domain of students. So they're integrating all of these three, and they're having trouble getting recognized. So this is just one point I'd like to make. Thank you. Uh, as a matter of fact, I have included this as one of the agenda items in the group discussion uh, working paper. So I have the pleasure of inviting Professor Fartek. We have come to the end of this uh, program. Um, Professor Fartek will talk about, he wants, uh, he's going to talk about uh, two topics. I'll not speak much because the T10KT program is well known. I just wanted to introduce uh, our new partners IIT Kharagpur, Professor Rajadatta and Professor Vashne are there. Could they please stand up? Yes. Uh, incidentally, when we ran the Train Thousand Teacher program, typical participation was 600, 700 teachers, and only in one course we exceeded 1,000 teachers. When we started ten, Train 10,000 Teachers program, the typical attendance was 6,000, 7,000. The first time we reached the figure of 9,950, was when IIT Kharagpur conducted a course on signals and systems. Of course, uh, late Professor uh, Somnath uh, Sengupta and our own colleague, Professor Vikram Gadare, taught that course. Very briefly, the, uh, the methodology is very simple. The interactive lectures are delivered from IIT Bombay to these 10,000 people who assemble at over 300 remote centers, 30, 40 to each center. The local tutorials and discussion sessions are held in the afternoon under the supervision of a local workshop coordinator 
who himself or herself is a teacher of that particular subject. But to ensure that these tutorials and discussions are conducted with the same quality as happens in IIT, had those teachers come here, we train these workshop coordinators for one week ahead of this main workshop. And in fact, we try to account for the variations in the syllabi of different universities. And the material that is covered is not at all the material that is normally taught in IITs, but the material that is required to be taught in the universities. We have found that this program has been very useful and very effective. And we have a mandate from the mission to train 1,50,000 teachers over the next three years. We are well on target. An important aspect of this use of technology is significant reduction in the cost. The typical QIP cost of conducting a training program for 35, 40 faculty members varies between 12,000 to 14,000 rupees per person. Our 1,000 teacher training program reduced this cost to 9,500. This program for 10,000 teachers has reduced the cost to 6,250 per teacher. Of course, when we train 10,000 teachers, we spent 6 crore rupees in one workshop. But like uh, 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 Anand Agarwal said, if we were to train 10,000 teachers in the normal mode, it would take 100 years to do that. The next phase, and our PRSG has approved uh, the change in stance. Instead of conducting the training program for two weeks entirely face to face, we'll be conducting one week of the program over five weeks of massive online activities. So those teachers will be trained for five weeks, doing one day of work in one week, and then they will come face to face for one week, further A, reducing the training program. Uh, training program cost, but B, more importantly, ensuring that the amount of time that the teachers spend is far more because they will be monitored, they will be doing assignments and so on. The second project that we do is the Akash project. All of you are familiar with it. I will not talk much about it. The Akash is uh, in, in your uh, kits. Akash is not a design innovation. Tablets are there everywhere. It's an innovation in affordable and appropriate technology. Tablets are only access devices. This device is an access come computing device. So we have done two important things. One, we have negotiated price for a minimum acceptable hardware and performance configuration. Second, we put in a whole lot of useful educational applications and contents, all released in open source under Creative Commons. And third, we have actually made that as a full-fledged computer by uh, porting Unix. So the Linux works on that. In your kit, there is a small SD card. If you insert that card into the SD card slot and boot it, it will boot Ubuntu. And in that Ubuntu, you have complete programming environment, Scilab, whatever, whatever you want to do. It's a, a full-fledged computing machine. We have used these for training for, for our students to actually write programs while doing exercises for solving. No tablet can be used for that purpose as of today. So these are the important things. The next phase of we, our project was to get one lakh tablets and field test them. So we received these one lakh tablets. Our cost was 2,263 because there was no custom duty and excise and other things. We tested them in the labs through CDAC and we have tested them in the field. Some 300 colleges, which are all our remote centers, are also Akash project centers. Additionally, about eight IITs are also participating. And the development work that is being done is constantly being put onto a single website called, I think, akashlabs.org. Yeah. So we have stalls there. You can look at those. One of the very important things and which we call a killer application is that we have designed the clicker devices to conduct quizzes online in the class. We ported the clicker software on Akash. And as Professor Kannan said it, he has been using it in his class, in a flipped classroom model. We have used it in uh, our t 10 KT programs. Uh, this particular application, incidentally, uh, won very recently the Asocham National Award in the category for, called IT for Education. So that's, that just happened three days or four days ago. The next version of Akash, the specifications have been drawn. 
since that will be a regular commercial activity iit bombay is not involved in that project but we participated in the interministerial committee to design the specs dg snd has just completed running a rate contract process where there is a rate contract for one piece and there is a, 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 a sort of concession that is available for 10000 1 lakh 5 lakh pieces etc the there will be four or five vendors who will be identified and universities colleges and general people can actually purchase those through the rate contract that would i think finish in about one month's time the third project which i will mention in just about 5 minutes is the mooks offering as mentioned in the morning we started our activities through the association with edx and will be offering the iit bombay courses on edx but more importantly we want to offer a blended mooks course directly to the students where the students will receive their grades through this course rather than doing a course in the university uh, i recently submitted a, a presented a invited paper where i have extensively elaborated both the need for teachers for discussion and therefore better learning and the use of the modern technology and how to blend it it's a long paper printed copies have been kept in the seats of the next hall where we will be going so please pick up that copy but please don't don't read it then because there are more important activities that you have to do please carry that print out and please do read it at home because tomorrow i'll be referring to it again and we will be starting this pilot for those uh, technical universities or the autonomous colleges or autonomous universities which wish to adopt the two courses we are offering one in thermodynamics and one in computer programming thermodynamics course is being taught by professor gay tonde i am going to personally teach cs10 and as i said we expect at least 1 lakh students minimum to benefit from this pilot but if there are 1 million so be it we will have the infrastructure there we are using the edx platform itself uh, we are very happy to do these large uh, things just one thing i would like to mention is that very recently through another sister project of the ministry techip project i have been asked to try and see how we could use these technologies in a massive way in 191 techip colleges i suppose many of those colleges will be part of the technical universities here and this involves both offering of the massive online courses through the blended mode including establishment of a local infrastructure in each college so that the local teachers if they want to offer a mooks within their college on the local area network they can offer it using the same edx adapted platform this activity is likely to start almost immediately uh, from this point so that's all i have to say we you want to make any announcement yeah, sir uh so it uh, gives me great pleasure uh, as far as the nme ict projects are concerned because i am the coordinator of these projects uh been uh, interfacing with the ministry and so on um uh, one of the things that i wanted to mention about tkt which is not at all obvious um we at the beginning of this t10kt started that is t10kt means train 10000 teachers we visited many centers and then we also did uh, some surveys feedback and uh, there are some people doing their phd also um one of the things that uh, professor fatak asked during that survey was um under what condition will you participate in this program he mentioned the prices like it has come to 6200 leading to 6.2 crore and so on um so three kinds of questions uh, i will attend uh, three options i will attend this only if i get tada travel allowance the second one i will attend even if i don't get any money third one i am it is so good i am willing to pay some money it turned out professor fatak makes money eventually okay eventually all of them there were one third one third one third so which means more than 50% of the people would be ready to take this course even without funds which is which is a very good thing the other thing the interesting statistics we got were in some courses at least even in engineering courses 49.5% of the participants were ladies whereas when i conduct a course in qip program when the students participants have to come from wherever they are not more than one or two ladies in a batch of about 30 people the reason is they cannot leave their home and come here in this t10kt the 300 remote centers are 
right next to their homes they are able to come in the morning go back in the evening so we found that that was a great in fact i would say this program empowered half the population of this country yeah and another thing that i wanted to mention we were, we went to some absolutely difficult to reach it took 3 hours to go to some remote centers from a train station not even a not even an airport not because of distances but because of bad roads but when we went there we found beautiful reception it was as if because they also had in uh, in enemy uh, ict bandwidth they also had nkn bandwidth uh, it was as if iit bombay or iit karakpur were next door so that means they this technology made our country a lot smaller so it's a it's a fanta there is another very subtle thing which also i will point out i think i was visiting srm srm uh, people are here uh, near chennai and uh, there was a there was a question asked from mysore and this professor from iit bombay was answering it's a electronics course as soon as the question was posted then all the people local people in this university in chennai they got into a huddle okay what is he saying what's happening through this discussion they quickly find out somebody who knows that person leads the discussion so in other words during this course there is a potential to create 300 centers of local discussion and so on which unfortunately we have failed to create through conferences okay conferences are used for something else okay but here under uh, this course the uh, fantastic things happen so this is a i, I think it's a great program and uh, so i thought i would add this to what Thank was the fortex uh, since we are in that mode of adding there is one very interesting point which i never thought would be important uh during our interaction in fact one of them uh, mentioned this when mr kapil sibbal was addressing them is very interesting people from jammu kashmir and people from northeast said that so many programs are held but they never reach us this is the first occasion where we believe that the nation cares for us and that we are part of the nation i think that was a very important by product of whatever was uh, happening there. 